Hey everybody, Mute Buster Green here. Well, all right, we're finally here. There's only one thing we need to talk about this week, and there's only one reason I'm making this video today. As of today, Gundenberg Mobile is dead in the water. This Wednesday was the last time the game will have any new content updates, and this final new content update just pretty much lays bare the end of the game and what's left to do for the next three months until the server finally shuts down and the game becomes a memory. Um, if this is news to you, here's some clips from my live stream where I go over the hard details. Um, Gundam New Type Labs, the very, very kind Discord server who has sponsored the channel for like years at this point, um, I got a message from them, and this is weird because I don't usually get messages from them. So yeah, checking on their server announcements. Um, yeah, it's not good. Uh, starting with other MC. Uh, Gundam Breaker Mobile is officially in sunset mode. Doors close on June 4, and uh, I guess we're going to party for the next two months. Yeah, MC's been a good guy. He's been uh, very helpful for organizing like battles among the community. The big thing here is that, yeah, it says here, we regret to announce the closure of Gundam Breaker Mobile. Thank you all for your support, and I hope you enjoyed playing the game. We'll be keeping the servers open to 6 o'clock on June 4, 2023, if you want to play Gundam Breaker Mobile until the very end. All the items will be usable until the last day, so if you have any Haro chips, please use them up before June 4th. Also, as of today, you can no longer purchase Haro chips. And as a result of the closing, there's going to be a final Gundam GBM Appreciation Festival. That's very nice of them. So yeah, let's get into the specifics. I know a lot of people are shell-shocked, so I need to go over some broad strokes about how we got here. So I'm going to recap the history of the game. And after the recap, I'll go over some frequently asked questions I've gotten in the past couple of days. Also, some conspiracy theories that have spilled out over the internet in the past few days. And uh, yeah, so let's do a recap. Also, guys, sorry for the recap, but I know in the future this video is going to be viewed by future generations who will have no idea what this game ever was. So I want to make sure they understand what it was. So I'm going to put down the whole context here and go over the entire story from the beginning. So, Gundam Breaker Mobile was a cell phone game that existed from 2019 to 2023. It was the first Gundam Breaker cell phone game ever developed. It was developed by the award-winning game team responsible for developing the hit PlayStation games Gundam Breaker 1, 2, and 3 on the PlayStation 3 and PS Vita. Now, because the veteran development team was working on Gundam Breaker Mobile, meanwhile, a new team was assembled on the PS4 to create the game New Gundam Breaker, which was a universally hated failure. By the way, I literally just started playing this game a few days ago, and I gotta say, it's very, very weird and very, very horny. Anyway, Gundam Breaker Mobile launched in the pristine summer of 2019, where the world was a completely different place. Oh, and if you live in America, this game was shoehorned with the very dumb English name of Gundam Battle Gunpla Warfare, which felt like two completely different titles they came up with and they couldn't pick one so they just stuck both of them on the game. Now at launch the game was okay except here's the number one problem with the game that ended up killing it now that I see in hindsight. Because the game had been developed by veteran PlayStation console developers, they had never made a mobile game before and even though they made a really friggin fun game, the developers never successfully figured out how to monetize the game. Right up to the end, they had this very ass backward way of thinking about how to make money, how to make money from the game, the rates of how you get stuff you want, and how you incentivize pulls to make the players spend money on wanting to pull stuff from the gotcha machine. So yeah, back to my overview of year one. In year one, the game was easy. You just had to play the game and you could beat the game. In the first year of Gundam Breaker Mobile, you could do everything the game offered without spending a cent on it, and it was just a fun game. There were weekly gacha suits, and most of the gacha suits were the bigger, more famous Gundams, and the main reason to pull them would be like, oh hey, the Zeta Gundam. I love the Zeta Gundam. It's my favorite show. I want this so bad. Or hey, the God Gundam. It's the best melee Gundam in the game. Or hey, the Wing Gundam. I love Wing Gundam. Like... The units were cool, but there was no real in-game incentive or penalty to going after these gacha units, other than the fact they had slightly higher stats than the weaker normal units in the game. 
The only reason you would ever want the gacha units were if you were big into playing the arena, which back at the start of the game had these exclusive reward suits, the gacha units started to dominate in the arena. And this was especially true when the Astray Red Frame came out, used Bisect, and suddenly broke the game's meta forever. But yeah, in the first year, the game was just pure fun. It didn't cost money, it had an interesting story, it had cute characters, and there were all these neat weekly events keeping the game fresh. But the big problem with the game that was lightly slowly killing it was there was no incentive to give the game money. But it was okay because it was a pretty casual game and we were all just having fun with it. Of course, in 2020, the global pandemic happened and because of the pandemic, they rolled out the first of two infinite energy events. I'm honestly really sad they didn't do one last infinite energy event for the game closing because Breaker has such a better completely different chill vibe when they turn on free play and you don't need to worry about energy. Plus, the infinite energy event allowed me to farm out the game's legendary secret unit, the Code Phi, a badass evil G-Self Banshee Kit Bash, whose pieces are rare drops from the free event missions. And then this brings us to year two, and I'm sorry you guys, but the game peaked in year two. Year two was the best this game ever was, and it never got better than that. Summer of 2020, the game hits its one year anniversary event, and it introduces Inferno missions. And now, hold up, I'm having serious deja vu right now because I kind of realized that a year ago I did a video going over the history of the game and its problems. And uh, yeah, that was called What Was Wrong With This Game In 2022. Um, I'm repeating a lot of the same stuff, so let's just watch that video now. But then, year two happened, and suddenly things got very serious. In year two, we got the 2.0 update, and that was when the game erupted from its cocoon to something monstrous and magical because in year two, they introduced the first Inferno missions. Now, the first Inferno missions were absolutely insane because on the one hand, they encouraged people to whale the game, and on the other hand, the only way to beat those first Inferno missions was to make an absolutely perfect build, fine-tuned to just beat that one mission. Like, it literally took me three days to figure out my first build to beat the first Fer Inferno mission. And it was kind of the same thing with, like, the ones that came after that. Like, I would spend days just mulling over, like, which weapon was most effective to just get me through this fucking 30-second battle that was just so absolutely piss-hard. And once the Inferno missions dropped, I was like, holy shit, this is such a real game now. And that's actually what got me to start my YouTube channel. Gun and Breaker Build Guide, because at that time, the only way to beat those Inferno missions was by either spending a shit ton of money to whale out your Gundam, or by having absolute perfect gameplay and absolute perfect strategy. And in either case, I wanted to see how I would pull it off, and I wanted to record it because I was wasting so much time trying to pull it off. And then after that, the September 2.1 update dropped. The 2.1 update was very serious. That update changed the meta of the game forever because it replaced the Inferno missions with the, at that time, much more superior and much more serious and much more terrifying Battle Circuit. The first Battle Circuit dropped and it was an absolute nightmare. I literally freaked out because it was so hard, so way beyond anything that had ever come before. The first battle circuit was barely beaten by a thousand players, and retrospectively, the game was never more fun than the first battle circuit, because the original battle circuit stressed your brain to the max to come up with 20 completely original gunpla builds that each had to be completely unique, each had to have their own strengths, their own weaknesses, and that was the only way to challenge these absolute maximum difficulty stages, which were the hardest stages in the entire game. Now, when these first came out, I was pissed because this came out of absolutely nowhere. And pre-Battle Circuit, I had just been leveling up my shit I was using. And now, post battle Circuit, the game was like, you have to level up fucking everything because it might come in handy in the Battle Circuit. And I want to say, despite that, year two was the best the game ever was. Now, there was also a three-week stretch in the middle of year two where they gave us infinite energy as a COVID-19 stimulus bonus. That was also an amazing week because at, during that week I unlocked the secret unit, the Code Phi, and I felt really good about that because normally that unit was like pretty much impossible to unlock. 
However, as time went on, every month the battle circuit got easier and easier because each week I would collect up more parts for it, each week I would level up more parts, and slowly but surely I crafted an army of 20 ass-kicking gunpla dedicated to kicking the battle circuit's ass week after week. And despite that, everything was still going good until July of 2022 when the 3.0 update came out. Now, fun fact, the 3.0 update video is my most watched video of the entire build guide series with close to 7,000 views at this time. I need to let you guys know, I hate the 3.0 update. The 3.0 update ruined this game. It nerfed the game, it ruined the best parts of it. Whereas year one had no challenges at all, year two had the amazing Inferno missions and then the eye-opening battle circuit. The battle circuit in year two was literally the core of the game. I would look forward to what I was going to do to handle the battle circuit every week and now that core had suddenly been ripped out and replaced with this dumbed down kids battle circuit. I'm calling it a kids battle circuit because that's what it was. In the new kid safe, kid friendly battle circuit, you had less time to complete the battle circuit, 10 minutes instead of 20. But now if your parts were leveled up, you could use them over and over again and it made it too fucking easy. You could just rush through the battle circuit with the same Gundam 10 times and put absolutely no effort into it whatsoever. And for a lot of the game's user base, that was a massive betrayal because now there was nothing to do. The battle circuit was the ultimate challenge and you just ripped it out. So why are you playing a game where there's nothing to do? So the ultimate challenge of the game was now just this fucking joke and you could speed run it. Like it was very, very disheartening. There was one last glimmer of hope though, and that was the Batlog event. In the Batlog event, we got the Batlog anime. That was really fulfilling for the player base because suddenly it was like, oh hey, everything we did mattered because they turned it into an anime. And that was actually really cool because we had been living in this game for two years. But since then, things have really fizzled out. Now, after that, they kept pushing the game, so they added Master Grade skill suits, which seemed fun at first, but annoyingly the way they did it, meant you need to recollect all the suits in the game and then recollect all these like master grade upgrade parts. And even then to this day, there's a pitiful number of suits that can that you can actually upgrade to master grade scale. It's like fucking 10 suits. It's like, why even bother? And then if that wasn't bad enough, the 3.2 update came out and that was even more pointless. The 3.2 update added seven star items, which made you even more stronger but again, why? There's no place for the strength. The game is so easy now, why would you even need that? So even the PvP player base didn't care because for three years we've been powering up our Gundams and we like our Gundams. And all our classic Gundams that we've had for three years, you can't power them up to seven stars. The seven star items only work on brand new suits. So that's another cash grab and a lot of people see that because it's so blatant and they're not happy. So, my friend Edward Elric also asked, how come so few people are playing the game these days? And those are the reasons, because they nerfed the game's greatest challenge, they didn't replace it with anything that was on the same level, I mean they added harder sc scenario missions, but that's like a fucking blink and it's done, and on top of that they're encouraging you to level up the charity suits to handle those, so those aren't even challenging at all. They were like barely challenging the first week because I wasn't expecting them. And now I know how to handle them, so they're not anything to worry about. If anything, Bamco got too greedy. They tried to make people buy too many new Gundams. When most people had already formed emotional attachments with the Gundam they already had, the Gundams they'd taken care of for the past two years. And on top of that, I've met a lot of players who just gave up and quit the game once they felt that they perfected their machines. Okay, thanks me from a year ago. Okay, I'm back. Uh, this is modern day me. Anyway, so yeah, I'll just continue on from here. So yeah, after 2022, another year went by and the game only got worse. Almost strangely reacting to the community-wide consensus that the game was not challenging anymore, Bandai dropped one more hard Inferno level mission called the Challenge of Gorgeous video. And this ended up being the final last hardest mission in the game. And uh, it honestly overwhelmed me, but I did finally beat it. However, to beat it, it took me two months of like studying and grinding and just pure strategy to 
make a team specifically to overcome it. And listen up, you guys. If anyone still playing this game has not beaten the challenge of Gorgeous Video, then you guys should go after it now because it stands as the hardest singular mission in the game. You guys have exactly three months to finish it. It's literally the final challenge of the game. So if you don't defeat it, then you can never really say you actually beat this game. Anyway, enough about Gamoro, the strange pirate clown from Japan. After the Challenge of Gorgeous video, it seemed that the writing was on the wall that the game was ending as the story hit its climactic ending and ended in chapter 20. And then the real turning point of the game was the 3.4 update. The 3.4 update ironically came out a year ago on April 14, 2022, and the 3.4 update was pretty much the end of Gunnenberger Mobile as we knew it up to that point. After that, the game effectively went into zombie mode because the game's development staff was significantly laid off and the game was now being run by a skeleton crew. The skeleton crew could only put out one-fourth as much content at a much slower rate of speed, and all of a sudden, a much higher emphasis was put on multiplayer and custom missions. On top of that, the once fun weekly event missions suddenly ended forever. And I'm feeling weird now because I realize it's one of those you didn't miss it until it's gone. Like the last event mission was this one where like everyone got a Zagak E from like the Gunpla shop. It aired on like March 31st, 2022. And yeah, there just never was an experience like that again. Like, we would still get new weekly events after that, but they wouldn't have stories anymore, and the cherry suits were all just reruns of suits that most people had already acquired in the first two years. And after the 3.4 update, I'm sorry, but there was no reason to give the game money anymore. Because the financial model of the game had shifted over the years from, at first it was like, give us money, you'll get good Gundams. Then, later on it shifted to, Give us money to get good Gundams, and you'll earn points for the charity missions to get new Gundams. But after the 3.4 update, it was, Give us money for rerun Gundams you already have that will earn you points for charity missions that will also give you rerun Gundams. On top of that, even if you were a sucker like me who was okay with that line of crap, they lowered the gacha rates after the 3.4 update, from previously, if you did like two pulls, you would get at least one rare part out of every two pulls. But now they so evilly lowered it to the unfair, maybe you'll get one part in every three pulls. And look, gacha games are inherently shitty. And I have a really hard time coming to terms that I have a 50-50 chance of throwing away my money for nothing. But as barely acceptable as a 50-50 chance for nothing is, Suddenly they changed that to a 66 versus 33 chance of I throw my money away for fucking nothing. And the prize is something already I have? Like, what the fuck is that? How is that a business model? Look, if I have to be really fair retroactively, I think what really killed this game in the end was that the gotcha system was never fair to the player base. And people knew it, so no one wanted to give this game money when two out of three times the game was just going to steal your money and laugh at you and give you nothing. That's like so intensely dumb. I honestly think that if a year ago they had just done the opposite, if they had raised the gacha rates so every pull you got a rare part, even if it wasn't the part you were looking for, I think that would have made more people happy and that would have made them feel more satisfied instead of them feeling ripped off and I think that alone could have saved the game. Instead, they didn't do that. The gacha rates were suddenly baked to be more evil, and a lot of people, including myself, just stopped giving the game money. Like, the only time it was worth giving the game money was on, like, holiday events, where the rates would suddenly shift back up to positive. Anyway, yeah, like, I can read the writing on the wall, so I've been expecting this game to be dead for a while now. I'm honestly not sure why I kept playing it. I guess I kept playing it because everyone asked me to and because you were all really supportive. And honestly, every time I did a live stream, I had a lot of fun with everyone. And you know what? I was once the 12th best player in the world at this game, but that doesn't matter now because this game doesn't exist anymore. So it's over. At least I managed to pull and assemble the Daryl Blade as my final consolation prize. At least me, Spider Hero, Dylan, and sometimes Amulet had one last good day of playing the last few missions and cleaning them up this week. But yeah, we finally stopped playing the game, 
I opened it up again today out of habit, but I, I can't do it anymore. I just got to let it sink into the ocean now. So, anyway, I'm not done with Gundam. I will be streaming new Gundam Breaker over the next couple of weeks to uh, make up for Gundam Breaker mobile being over. And in the event that there is any additional final content, I will boot the game up again for that and give it one last hurrah. But I think that last hurrah was this Wednesday and I'm not expecting anything else to come out. Now, finally, before I wrap up this video, there's a bunch of crazy rumors that I need to quash before we conclude the broadcast. First off, some guy named Max M. Is that the Max I know? Is that the Max who's my friend? Anyway, he put out a change.org petition to beg Bandai not to kill the game. And uh, that's cute, Max. I don't think it's going to work, but hey, nice try. Also, since Gundam Metaverse was announced literally last week, I've been getting a lot of people very confused who like don't understand what Gundam Metaverse is and they're like messaging me like, Hey MB, did Bandai kill GBM to make room for Gundam Metaverse? And I mean like barely from a budget perspective, maybe they laid off the Gundam Breaker mobile crew to hire people to work on Metaverse. But guys, big picture here, Gundam Metaverse is not a replacement for Gundam Breaker mobile. As far as I know, because I did a lot of research about it last week, Gundam Metaverse is strictly an online social media website and Gunpla shop. It's not a video game. It's not meant to replace Gundam Breaker Mobile. If anything, it's meant to replace Facebook and eBay. Like, yeah, it does have Gunpla scanner technology. And yeah, when Gunpla scanner technology was last showed in the Road to Gunpla project, it was being used for a video game. But as far as I know, in the metaverse, it seems to be strictly a thing where you buy gun plaws and then you scan the gun plaws you bought to show them off in VR. It has absolutely nothing to do with a video game or gameplay. Now, I'm not saying and I'm not ruling out that there might be a VR or scanning based Gundam Breaker project coming along in the future, but right now, that is not what Gundam Metaverse is. That might be Bandai's long-term goal, but yeah, Gundam Metaverse is not that. Gundam Metaverse seems to strictly be a 3D avatar-based chat room where you buy Gunpla and then you show off the Gunpla you bought in VR. I am hoping, though, that in a best-case scenario, the best thing I could hope for this game in terms of it having any legacy since the Gundam Breaker mobile game was developed by the team that did Gundam Breaker 3, and Gundam Breaker 3 was the last hit Gundam Breaker game. Gundam Breaker mobile had a lot of assets recycled from Gundam Breaker 3, so I'm basically praying that the team can get back together and develop Gundam Breaker 4 for the PS5 with all of the new suits developed inside of Gundam Breaker mobile just on the PS5. I think if they can do that, I think if that game can ever be realized, that game will be a guaranteed million dollar money making hit. And the last stupid frequently asked question I have to address is a lot of people got concerned that since Gundam Breaker Mobile has ended, I will somehow disappear or die because I foolishly linked my life to it. Well, good news everyone, I'm going to be fine if this game no, no longer exists. In fact, I think I might even sleep better, or at least I hope so. I am going to be streaming new Gundam Breaker for the next few weeks as a cool off to like wean everyone off it. And after I beat that game, because I don't think it's that long, I plan to acquire and beat the new console SD Gundam game that is very popular for everyone. And don't forget everyone, I am still developing my anime project. I have officially been working on this anime for a full year as of today. So I'm really hoping you guys stick around for that. I'm also hoping to drop a really cool new trailer for that in like the next month or so. Oh, and also I will be reviewing season two of Witch for Mercury very soon, so look forward to that. Oh, and one more thing, um, because since the game is ending but we do have a little bit more time with it, Gundam Breaker Mobile will become lost media and cease to exist forever, and I know some of my most popular streams were when I went over story mode for the game. Do you guys want me to like compile those all together or otherwise make sure I cover the earlier story chapters? Because when I started streaming the game, it was like a year into it. So I don't think I went over the first 12 or so story chapters. 
Would you want me to just like put those up for the sake of like having it all together? Anyway, if you guys want that, leave a comment and I'll think about doing it. Uh, otherwise, I could also like do like super edits of like the existing story chapters and just like make a long story movie. I guess I could do that too. Anyway, let me know what you guys want. If I have time, I'll get around to it. All right, thank you guys. And uh, this might be the last time we talk about Gunbreaker Mobile. Maybe. All right, good night. Bye.